Like, what life can you offer a teacher at 70 years of age? There's nothing that a wise teacher can't offer to other teachers or to the institution itself. Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Accolades Conversation Series, in which I talk to some of my favorite artists about who or what they would recommend me checking out. Make sure to subscribe to our channel or hit the like button. KRS-One is an American rapper from New York City. He rose to prominence as part of the hip-hop group Boogie Down Productions, which he formed with DJ Scott LaRock in the mid-1980s. KRS-One is known for the songs Sound of the Police, Love's Gonna Get You, and My Philosophy. Boogie Down Productions received numerous awards and critical acclaim in their early years. Following the release of their debut album, Criminal Minded, fellow artist Scott LaRock was shot and killed but KRS-One continued the group effectively as a solo project. He began releasing records under his own name in 1993. He's widely considered an influence on many hip-hop artists. I spoke to KRS about the importance of teachers to our society. It was an interesting conversation, a bit different from our normal program recorded live at the Kroon in Kortrijk after I did a warm-up DJ set for him in early December 2022. If you are into my illustrations, please check out my illustration book Accolades, which you can still get on CrateRecords.be. This is what KRS had to add. Your psychology is great. That who would you like to give props to? Everybody want to give props to somebody else. That That's a question to really think about because, okay, like right now, I would say the outsiders. I would say uh, PSK, Parkside Killers, uh, Schooly D, you know. Other groups that broke through but didn't really get the accolades they were supposed to get for the contribution that they laid down. Like, for instance, in dance, you got like the Wonder Twins. These were huge figures. Uh, and, and we say never got the accolades they were supposed to. Some will argue, I will say Bruce Lee. But yes, Bruce Lee is everywhere. Yeah, everybody know Bruce Lee, you know. Kwame Ture, formerly known as Stokely Carmichael. And he, he, he doesn't get enough, I don't think. Even Marcus Garvey, you know, not, not just back to Africa, mm -hmm. but his thinking, you know, for the time, you know, the, how he thought about things. You know, n none of these guys really get. I mean, you have a docu-series for heaven of the, the blog, Belly Mel, and even more than him, I would say Grandmaster Flash. Like, this dude invented the chewing system mm -hmm. on mixes. And, like, nah, you just don't make that shit. And <laughs> it's in every fucking mixer. And you, he's nothing. He's just, you know, that's that's crazy. Uh, you're catching me at a time mm -hmm. where I'm not really in an artistic hand. I'm in a union hand. Gotcha. So if you ask me... Who's not getting accolade? I would say the front lines workers. It's a crime that a, a, a popular teacher, the teacher of school, public school, college, or whatever, is, is can't make nearly as much as a popular rapper. And this is the reason why you have government. This is the reason for government. To bring order to a society, not take something away from one person and give to another but order the society in such a way where justice prevails. Mm -hmm. uh, teachers are the most important people in, in our society. She's gonna, she's gonna love hearing that. I'm a teacher oh. as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am not trying to flatter you at all. You didn't even know, so I didn't mean, know. <laughs> but allow me yeah, yeah. to Please go on. Cool. Uh, because no, I mean that, um, that, that teachers are, are the most important uh, professionals in a society, are uh, probably the most important beings in nature, is a teacher. Somebody who shows you the way, and, 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 and not just accolades in terms of pay. You know the pay got to go up. You know the benefits got to go up. You know the teachers would, after giving 20 years 30 years of teaching, what else are you supposed to do with your life at the end? It's not just so much about benefits and, and health care. It's like, what life can you offer a teacher at 70 years of age? There's nothing that a wise teacher can't offer to other teachers 
or to the institution itself, better ways of doing things. Now that you've worked 30 years, you know that this doesn't work. You know that this does work. You've seen the generations change. To throw people away in their older age is something we really have to pay attention to, like really start paying attention to. And the idea is and it's a catch-22 because teachers should start teaching this concept uh, to their children, putting this concept into whatever lesson plan it is. Like for instance, the basis of education right now, and I'm just paraphrasing, I'm, I'm, I'm generalizing. Uh, general education is for you to become a model citizen of whatever country you're in and to get a job. This is the basis of education. Can you follow orders and do you know how to function in society? But if we had an educational system that cooperated with itself, not you being trained to compete, but you're being trained to cooperate, which means that it's nothing for you to serve the next person. As a young child, you're taught how to serve the next person and, all, and everybody's serving, everybody's serving everybody. This is what we don't have. Uh, and, and we don't have teachers in society. Look, this was supposed to happen with the church, okay? Or the synagogue, the mosque, the temple, some sort of spiritual organization is supposed to give you this kind of character where it is nothing to serve another person. We used to all be like this. Every society, every culture. You go back to their culture, their real culture, not the militarism of, of anybody's culture, but the, the actual people of the culture. It's all about cooperation. You can walk into any village, anywhere, and people will offer you bread, somewhere to sit, something to drink. If they see you're cutting, you're bleeding, they'll come with a cloth. This is human nature. But we're not learning human nature anymore. Even teachers have to teach the militaristic history of the nation. How did we get here? Well, we fought and we killed people, so now we're here. That ain't what happened. That's what the military did, and they're trying to make their crimes against humanity everybody's mm -hmm. history, uh, so, so they normalize it. Teachers have to become courageous in the retelling of history, which includes cooperation over competition. And it's like, you gotta be courageous because you're gonna get fired. You, you, you're going to get ostracized. You, you're going you're gonna to be told this is not what the lesson plan is. But it's like, we're going to have to start creating new institutions that are teaching young people that it's okay to serve another person. Volunteerism is cool. Uh, helping out another person in need is cool. That's, that's something that's good. Right now, believe it or not, no, that's not cool. What's cool is kill him before he kills you. Uh, can you get over on the next person before they get over on you? Uh, you know, competition. So I'll end off and, and just say that the idea, well, what doesn't get, and this is, this is the overall talk theme, what doesn't get enough accolade is voluntarism and charity. Principles like these mm. doesn't get enough accolade, doesn't get charity. Does, like my wife was saying the other day, somebody did something for her, she gave him five pounds, and the woman didn't know how to receive it. No one ever gave her anything, <laughs> obviously. Like she, she didn't know how to receive it. Now we dumb Americans, okay? We come in with tourists, we hand the money to everybody, okay? So we, like, we run around, but you notice in some parts of Europe as well, in some parts of America, but really I noticed in Europe and in England, some people refuse to tip. It's against their, 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 their principles. They say, no, I, I'm doing my job. I don't, I don't need extra money. I don't, I, that breeds corruption. Uh, you know, this kind of But the thing. question is then if you, I, mean, that, uh, I, yeah, I don't want to, but, but uh, yes, come the, on. The, the question is, is the principle of tipping the way to go right. or not to go? Because I noticed like my experience in North America is the opposite. If tipping, like if me as a European coming to North America and sitting in a restaurant and the idea of tipping is if the service is well, you tip more. Right. And the service was shit. Right. What do you do then? You don't tip nothing. Yeah, but then they come after you in the street to say, where's my tip? In so, America? Yeah, it happened. It happened to me two or three times. <laughs> yeah. And I'm happy to tip, but it's like just, if that's the principle, if somebody explains to me that's the principle, it all comes down, like that's how I understood it is that, that, uh, that people get paid so little right. that they that they need that tip to survive. Right. So 
that's their whole no goal. it is a debate which is which is like then you can think like if your wage is good enough right why would you think but see right. this is complete no i could no, talk you, about you, this for hours you <laughs> you you touched it you you then you articulated it so so well that is the debate that is the debate the wages are so low that you have to depend on tips. And so if you walk into, see, the, the, then it goes into why support. See, the, Europe, the European wages are higher than the, right. the, and the US. Right, right. So, so that's, that's the question, like, right. if you're tipping in, in Europe, it's, but it's, see, that's so, I do understand right. because a lot of people, but that's, I had the same conversation with a Canadian friend of mine who was here, who was like, this is so weird, you guys, you guys all buy drinks for each other. Right. We don't do that. We right. buy our own drinks. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, the idea of like buying each other drinks right. is so nice. Right. Right? Right. And it's like, it's like, it's a complete difference right. as the way you like, you know, right. with the attribution. But what is right and what is wrong, right? Well, yeah. no, it's not. No, it's how they, it's, it's how, it's how they grow. Look, here, to ask for ice cubes, they give you two ice cubes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> ask for water, to ask for water in a restaurant. To ask for water. You know, it is what it is. But but no, there is no right. There, there is no right or this is not a moral issue. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this is an issue of being. And and so I, I go back, I just say that principles like charity, mm -hmm. like volunteerism, like uh and go back to the tipping, the idea of tipping, I think the rich have a responsibility to help those in need. That's where I come from with it. With, mm -hmm. with, with, with it all. I think if you, in these times, in these times where it is clear that in some of the richest countries in the world, there is still hunger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like people, you could actually walk past somebody who did not mm -hmm. eat today and cannot eat. Mm -hmm. Okay, why they don't have a credit card? Why no cap? Well, it's a problem in the schools here. People come with luck with empty lunch boxes. Right. Yeah. Wow, that happens yeah. every day, every day, right? Yeah, Even yeah. here, True. right? Yeah. You know, so it, it's like so. I, I feel that those with means, if you have a heart uh, in that sense, you should do what you can to help those without. It's just that simple. If, if I have four sandwiches, and I'm abundant in sandwich. And you don't have a sandwich. You have nothing. Mm -hmm. I can't cut half of one of my sandwiches and give you a half of a of a sandwich. Mm -hmm. I, I find that ridiculous. So teachers are what <laughs> we need. Ooh, and, we got it. And that's <laughs> it. Teachers are what we need. And thank you for your service <laughs> to our neurons. Thank cells. you, Kim, for your service. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to Kim. Shout, Shout out to Kim. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Kim. I want to thank KRS for this conversation. On next week's episode, I'm talking to four-time world DJ champion DJ Prime Cuts about Draxia's Gerald Donald. Thanks for listening, watching, or however you check out accolades. Give us a thumbs up or follow our channel. See you next week.